Hello, one and all, this is Buena Tacos, and welcome back to Stories from Sector 10, the Warhammer podcast that I do. Uh, currently, recording this video is extremely ill-advised, at least for myself, uh, because I am way, way, way tired right now, but I'm doing this anyways because there's probably not going to be a better opportunity to do this during the week. So, if my voice sounds a little weary or if I'm unable to concentrate or stay focused on a single topic that would be why and I hope I, my voice isn't too weary because considering this is a voice based medium that's literally all I have to provide you with this video so um, moving on to the actual topic at hand um, this was a game I played on Saturday it is currently Monday night as I record this very late Monday night but as I my, it's been a rough day. We'll say that. Um, but I'm recording this now because don't have, don't have time later. Uh, played this on Saturday, and regardless of my current state, this video or this video it is technically a video. Uh, this video should be relatively short and easy to go through because it wasn't a very long or particularly interesting game. I say that a lot, but that's just how how games are for me these days. Uh, trust me, when I have one of the good ones, you'll hear about it. Uh, this is not one of the good ones. Um, it's a kind of a sad story, but it, it happens. Um, so, I played this on Saturday, and when I went to the local game store, I wasn't sure what I wanted to play before I left, before I hit it out. Uh, but for some reason, and I know that like my logic told me this was a bad idea, but it's what I wanted to do anyways. My gut told me to play orcs that day. I wanted to play orcs, and uh, I knew that was going to be... I knew that was going to hurt, because there's so many disadvantages to playing an index. You don't get the stratagems, you don't get the uh, army-wide bonuses, from having a, a whatever in the, in the orcs instance a clan rule and uh, your powerpoint costs have yet to be adjusted and by adjusted I mean pretty much universally lowered um, so it, there's there's some heavy disadvantages uh, another disadvantage for orcs in particular is uh, currently there's no access to ard boys since ard boys are, are not in the index uh, it's safe to assume they'll come back in the codex but for the time being they just don't exist and um, our boys are, are a nice thing to have so not having our boys right now doesn't bother me too much but uh, I know a couple of other orc players who were like you oh, know this is devastating so uh, it's just another thing in in the list of all the other problems but I knew playing orcs was pretty much gonna cost me a game but it, they're what I wanted to play and I don't typically play to win anyways I do play to try to have a fair game and I knew I wasn't going to have much of that uh, playing orcs but I still I'm naive enough to think I can try to balance it out um, I did not balance it out um, this is a story of a game that effectively ended turn one it actually ended turn three uh, but if it was it was over turn one for all intents and purposes and then it would just it wasn't until turn three that it actually legally finished um here's what i mean by that um i'm skipping over some of the important details um i played orcs and i played against the tau player uh one tau player that's the same tau player who's consistent with those games as opposed to all the other tau players that we have that just aren't consistent um so it's the same. It's like the same top player I played against cultists and whatnot. Um, we played a, a 75 PowerPoint game, and I went into the game feeling happy because I was able to play orcs again. That very, very quickly changed, and I'm not going to go into all the detail about like mission objectives and deployment and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm basically going to cut to the meat because the, there's not a you don't need a lot of setup to hear what happens on turn one and then know well basically nothing else matters at that point uh, so what happened turn one uh, because I was playing orcs I 
as you would possibly understand, had more to deploy than the Tau player. So he had the plus one to his initiative roll off, and he won the initiative. And I, I did not, I did not seize. So the Tau player got to go first. Uh, he got to move and shoot his whole army before my, before my orcs got to step out of my deployment zone. Uh, not too much of a problem. I, it's, it's fine when you're playing orcs and you expect to lose a couple of units. I expected them to get first blood from me. Uh, here's what I wasn't expecting. Um, in a feat of what I have to believe is a combination of, of good dice rolls on the top player part and just an unfortunate situation with, with my army. Um, I did not get one cover save this whole game because there wasn't cover on the terrain we had, period. Um, that's not, that's not doomsday for orcs, but it's, it's certainly not, not something that helps us all. Like, Space Marine players can get by without having cover. Orcs, we, we, we need it more than most. Uh, huh. In fact, I would argue orcs probably need it more than anyone else. But I didn't have it. There just wasn't terrain on the board to use. Um, if I, there wasn't terrain that I could use to move forward, and if I'm not moving forward on a Tau army, I'm not doing it right. I have to get his stuff in close combat. I can't play a ranged war with Tau. Um... <laughs> At least not with orcs. So I, I knew I had to. I knew I had to stand in cover and just take it. We played a seventy-five PowerPoint game. Before I got to move, before my turn one had even happened, he had killed, outright killed, twenty PowerPoints in terms of units. So I'm already at fifty-five. And then I'm not counting these PowerPoints because this unit was still technically alive. He did eight of the total of sixteen wounds on my. Uh, battle wagon that I had. So I say goodbye to 20 of my PowerPoints and I watch my my vehicle, my big vehicle, the, the really, I had that in the Death Dread uh, were my only vehicles in this particular game. I watched, uh, I watched it lose half of its wounds. I expected it to lose half of its wounds. Vehicles in this edition are just, they're they're, they're, they're super, super durable until, I guess it's the same as any other edition. You throw a melt at them and they just go away. It, it really is like that. You, you, take, you take a vehicle with a 4-up armor with no invul, hit it with a, a AP-4 gun and it does D6 damage and just say, take it. Take it and like it. Um, I am of the opinion that all vehicles... Uh, no matter like no matter whose faction it is, all vehicles of a certain t price barrier need to have an invul save, and I I think I think the the battle wagon surpasses what I would consider the price barrier. Like uh, vehicles like trucks uh, uh, don't need an invul save. Raiders don't need an invul save. They have an invul save because they're dark outer, and I can excuse that. But like trucks don't need one. Rhinos don't need one. They're just transports. I think the Land Raider should just get an nimble save. I think the Battle Wagon should just get an nimble save. I think the uh, the Monolith should just get an nimble save. Basically, any vehicle with like over 15 wounds, because it's it's so insulting to bring something like that and then say like, oh, here's my here's my 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 unit with fusion blasters that costs significantly less than your vehicle basically cream your vehicle um but that that's i don't want to sound too salty about that i sound a little too salty about that because i'm tired um again i'm accustomed to taking that on the vehicle i took that in the chin that's fine it was the 20 power points that immediately set the bar i'm not gonna say it upset me it didn't it, it, it did actually upset me for about 30 seconds. And I, I, I it's true, I just looked right at the Tau player, and I, can, I don't know exactly what I said, but basically I just, like, I, I'm saying, basically, that set the bar. You, you showed me what I, like, I haven't lost. You've just showed me what I need to do in return. Because a good portion of his army, two units of worse at least, uh, were stealth suits that infiltrated right in my face. Um, 
his cold star flew up right to my face, his ghost kill wasn't that far away, and his riptide wasn't that far away, because they all fly and get close to me. So, I had some good opportunities for turn one charges. I wasn't, I wasn't in despair. I just, I looked at the tower player, and I, I, I blatantly told him, you have now killed 20 power points of my army before I have had the opportunity to move. Now I need to kill about 20 in my turn. I did not. My turn one goes through. Um, I managed to kill a single shield drone and a single stealth suit. That is literally it. And it is at that point that I did not call it. I wanted him to finish tabling me. And he did by turn three. But at that point, it's basically over. And if you... I, 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 I know... I am a bit of a pessimist from time to time, especially when it comes to Warhammer, but anyone who's listening to this who's shrugging and saying, no, nah, you still could have won, no. You're not just being an, you're not being an optimist, you're being an idiot. If, let's look at it mathematically, because that's how I look at it, and that's how you should look at it. He took his army at 75 power points worth of strength and killed 20 power points in a single turn. I, in response, killed a shield drone and a stealth suit. Technically, I killed zero power points because they're not even part of they're not even whole units. And if they were, I've killed the equivalent of what, maybe four power points at best. There is literally nothing stopping him from doing another twenty power points to me, and then I have even less to fight him back with. And in case you're wondering. His turn two, yes, he did take out easily another 20 power points worth. Um, the battle wagon alone is 11 points, and he popped that turn two. Uh, so, it's it's one of those things where it's like, it, turn one sets the bar. It 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 normally sets the bar, but it it especially sets the bar when when your opponent kills 20 power points. You you know what you have to do to keep up. And I just wasn't, I couldn't keep up in this instance. I'm not inclined to blame it on the index. Um, I think being an index is part of it. I just, I think it was a perfect storm of conditions. His, his dice were just right. Uh, it was just right that I wasn't in cover. His positions were just right. It was, it was just a little bit of everything that kind of created that kind of game. And, and this is the kind of game that I could have could have had in any edition so as like i said it's i don't even think it's an index thing it's just this happens in 40k sometimes um it just it it, it sucks when it does happen but uh i've had worse games and it's it's if you're gonna lose and lose hard like i did it's better to just lose hard and lose hard quickly there it's worse when like You've, you've effectively lost the game turn one, but it still takes him like turn five to kill you. No, this one went quick. This was even, this was like a three hour game. Uh, this went quick. Um, the lo it, it, I think it took us longer to set up than it did to play. Because it takes me a long time to set up a unit of 20 boys, pulling it out of my case, putting it on the table, and then eventually deploying it on the table once I have air all of my stuff out. And he just killed the whole unit at once and it just gets literally thrown right back in the bucket. So it's it's like... It, it took longer. I think it took longer to set up than it did to play. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about um, in regards to the battle wagon, um, I did not know... The battle wagon had such a badass explosion rule. I did not know, because uh, this is my first time using it in, in this edition, and my opponent did not did not know either. And unfortunately, when my battle wagon blew up, it was near his ghost kill, his riptide, one of his commanders, two of his unit, or three of his units of drones, and both of his units of stealth suits. It was in range of a lot of his stuff, and. Yes, I rolled a six. Everything within the arc took took D six mortal wounds. He couldn't believe it. Neither can I. <laughs> but but we we definitely agreed. A, a strategy for arc players right now is bring battle wagons and just advance them as close to the opponent's army as possible because 
they're going to put ammo into that to make sure that thing goes away. <laughs> just, to, just in case. Um, we even thought, obviously, they're not out yet. We have no proof to believe this actually exists. But we thought it would be funny and actually canonical for the army if one of the orc stratagems was you play this card and you don't roll to see if a vehicle explodes it just explodes because it's made out of orc bits and orc bits tend to explode so uh, we actually thought that would be a pretty interesting stratagem and if the stratagem did exist if you could use that on the battle wagons for its d6 automatic wounds mortal wounds people people would be shooting down those battle wagons with everything they had to make sure they couldn't get close to whatever whatever they wanted to inflict that many wounds to um, my battle wagon also finished clearing off whatever that side of his board was. So, like, he he didn't have to worry about close combat or anything like that. I didn't tie down any of his units or anything mythical like that. It, it was just it was a pure pure slaughter. Um, like I said, he killed twenty power points in one turn. I could not return the favor, and in turn two, he killed another twenty. And then all of a sudden, I'm looking at like like thirty five power points against the seventy five power point army, and it's just like it, it, it gets quicker and quicker. Um, I called it when all I had left was a unit of Gretchen and a Runter because I, I told him I'm not gonna bother have you finishing shooting down a Gretchen. <laughs> so that's my story for this for this week. Uh, hopefully we'll have another one for you next week, and there will be another story from Sector 10 video coming up right after this one, which will not be a story. It will be a discussion, a discussion about a particular codex, uh, which you can probably already see because it'll be up the same day as this so if you've seen my uploads you know you know what i mean so thank you for listening and i will see you guys later